Good day, good people of the interwebs. Today I'm going to do something that I haven't done on my channel before. I'm going to read from the Prosa Edda, written by Snorri Sturluson and translated throughout many ways. Basically, this is the last written evidence of the North mythology. That's not really true, there are other pieces written, but this is probably the most famous of them. Okay, so I'm going to read out of this, and what I'm going to read about is Ragnarok. Now, why about Ragnarok? Please, bear with me. I will read this, and it's quite a story, and then I will try to explain why. Gangleri, ass of the High One. What is there to relate about Ragnarok? I have never heard tell of this before. The High One said, There are many and great tidings to tell about it. First will come the winter, called Fimbulvetr, terrible winter. Snow will drive from all quarters. There will be hard frosts and biting winds. The sun will be no use. There will be three such winters and on end with no summer between. Before that, however, three other winters will pass, accompanied by great wars throughout the whole world. Brother will kill each other for the sake of gain, and no one will spare father or son in manslaughter or incest. As it says in the Sibyl's vision, brothers will fight and kill each other, siblings do incest, men will know misery, adulteries be multiplied, an axe age, a sword age, shield will be cloven, a wind age, a wolf age before the world's ruin. Then will occur what will seem a great piece of news. The wolf will swallow the sun, and that will seem a great disaster to men. Then another wolf will seize the moon, and that one too will do great harm. The stars will disappear from the heavens, then this will come to pass, the whole surface of the earth and the mountains will tremble, so violently that trees will be uprooted from the ground, mountains will crash down, and all fetters and bonds will be snapped and severed. The wolf Fenris will get loose then, and the sea will lash again the land, because the Midgard serpent is writhing in giant fury trying to come ashore. Okay, this is just a short bit of it. The most important thing is not the talking of destruction and how the gods and monsters will break the land. The most important thing is that it will be an axe age, a sword age, and shields will be broken. Brothers will fight brothers, and siblings will do incest, and men will know misery. Now, if we look at that, we cannot help but recognize that even though this might be mythology of a culture more than a thousand years away, there seems to be some value in it. Now, I've often talked on my channel about Maustopia and the, the dangers that Maustopia showed us. Mice eventually will stop caring for their young, male mice will show more feminine behavior. That doesn't mean that feminine mice will become males, but somehow society is uprooted, normal standards disappear, and eventually the mouse colonies die out. Bonds are being broken. No one takes care of the siblings anymore. Incest is acceptable. Boys 
will no longer be allowed to be boys. They will not be grown up into men. Women do not recognize themselves as women anymore. They can't be who they are. No, no. Everything has to be different. What, my good friends, if what we are seeing now is basically what was described as the Ragnarok? Well, obviously, we haven't had the terrible winters. I mean, the sun is so bright that the world is warming up as we speak. But at the same time, we see brothers turning on brothers. We see incest rising. The call for pedophilia to be normalized is a thing that's going on right now. Now, recognizing all these things and then looking at history and seeing that this has happened before at the fall of the Roman Empire, at the fall of the Greek Empire. And if we look deeper into it, the Persian Empire had a similar problem. Now obviously they had an outside agitator, as did the Romans, as did the Greeks, but society it's itself was crumbling. And there is something scary we should realize in all of this. Now, it came to me as quite a shock when I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast where he was talking to Douglas Murray, who is indeed a very smart man. Now, obviously, I uh, do not know either of these people personally, and they have never heard of me. But Douglas Murray said something to me that made me think. Please listen to this. Isn't it worrying? that it is the debate that it has become. And I just, I worry, it was Camille Parrier who first alerted me to this. I worry about the dominance that trans has taken precisely where we started off because it's an end of empire discussion. Yeah, you know this? Paglia says at the end of every empire, they get interested in sexual fluidity, hermaphroditism and so on. And I do think that if this is the end of American dominance in the world, and it could be, if America falls into civil war, then this is the end of American dominance. It's the end of the West as we, we, we saw it, and the rise obviously in the overtaking by China, and uh, well, China first of all. And, and if, his, if that happens, and historians look back on this, one of the things that they will say is, wasn't it strange that in the last decade, this American society got completely hung up on the issue of trans. It, it will be seen to be a late empire, um, a bad sign, a bad sign of things falling apart, on top of the multitude of other bad signs that you, particularly in America, have all around you at the moment. Now, obviously, society isn't crumbling because there are trans people out there, but there is a lot of oikophobia going on. We are not to recognize our history. We are not to recognize the things that make our society great. We are not to recognize what makes men and women great. Everything has to be looked at in a postmodernistic way, preventing recognition of the truth. Everything has to follow certain narratives that themselves cannot follow anything else, so they too will crumble and reappear in different forms. What we are seeing happening is the destruction of reality of society. Now that sounds rather doom and gloom, but in all fairness, look at Black Lives Matter in America. Most of the people supporting Black Lives Matter aren't black. Most black people in America aren't supporting Black Lives Matter. But it's being exported throughout the Western world as a good thing. Why? Well, because the people in power in the Western world, most people in power in the Western world, don't care about their society. They don't care about the Western world. They are happily ignoring reality to make sure that they destroy situations, societies. Because why wouldn't they? Open up the borders. Let unlimited immigrants come in. Give these immigrants free housing. Give these immigrants 
free food, free everything. Yeah, but how are we going to pay for it? Yeah, that's that's not our problem. We'll see that in the future. Yeah, but there won't be a future if your society collapses. Yeah, but by then we will be gone, so who cares? Once there was a time when people thought it was wisdom to plant trees in which shade they would never sit. Now we have leaders who think it's wisdom to burn down bridges because they don't think they might need them. I know, doom and gloom, I'm sorry. Anyway, criticism as always is more than welcome. I look forward to hearing your thought and I hope to see you all next time.